Workers start by applying an airtight sealant to close any gaps between the skin and the frame. The fuselage must be sealed so the cabin can be pressurized. A pressurized cabin allows passengers to breathe comfortably at higher altitudes. Once the sealing is complete, they attach the corresponding aluminum skin panel. It has already been primed for paint. They apply Clico fasteners to properly align the panel until it's riveted to the frame. Then they select the rivets. They'll need rivets of various sizes and strengths for the different parts of the plane. They begin riveting the holes that don't have Clico fasteners in them. Then they remove the Clicos and rivet those holes as well. The fuselage is built in six sections. The front section houses the engine compartment. All the sections have attachment panels that fit in between the frame and skin of the adjacent part. Workers rivet the sections together. Once the back sections are installed, they rivet the completed fuselage to the main spar that connects the wings. They install the retractable landing gear, the tail section rudder, and stabilizers. They also install the moving flaps and ailerons. Workers weld together steel tubes to create the engine mount. The mount will be installed in the engine compartment in the front of the fuselage. This section also houses the nose landing gear. They prime and paint the steel engine mount to prevent corrosion. This plane has a 500 horsepower turbine engine. Workers bolt it to the engine mount. Then they bolt the engine mount to the airplane's engine compartment. The engine rotates a shaft, which spins the propeller. Meanwhile, all the airplane's electrical wiring is mapped out on an assembly board. Each wire has a number. The wires are arranged in a specific configuration. Then, workers group the wires by their location in the airplane and tie them in a wiring harness. These wires are for the back of the instrument panel. The circuit breakers are located on either side of the flight display panel. With the push of a button, the pilot can customize the information displayed on the center screen. Technicians thoroughly test all the electronic functions as well as the autopilot system. One pilot can operate this plane but it comes with an extra yoke to accommodate a co-pilot. Workers install the interior and the windows. Then mechanics verify the flight control surfaces, the moving parts on the wings and tail that change altitude or direction. Here they're checking the ailerons. A mechanic in the cockpit turns the yoke, while another uses a rigging board to measure how the aileron responds. If the angle's off, he makes an adjustment. They check the landing gear to make sure it drops down from the wing and engine compartment. Then they mask the windows and apply a second coat of primer for extra protection against corrosion. When the primer dries, they paint the plane to the customer's specifications. Then they paint the plane's registration number on both sides as required by law. The airplane's de-icing system heats the propeller blades to melt ice buildup. It also uses inflatable rubber bladders attached to the wing and tail. The pilot throws a switch to inflate the bladders and break any ice, ensuring a smooth, safe ride, even in poor weather conditions.